Good morning. We made our way over to uh, Nima's parents' house here in Natchez, Washington. And we're going to do a little maintenance uh, this week. We're here for about a week and we got all kinds of things planned. I'm Nima and this is Jeff. March 2020, we sold everything and set out on an epic adventure. If you would like to join us, please subscribe and let's go. It's time to do some cleaning after the big run down the coast. And i uh, been using a lot of these products for a little over a year now and did quite a bit of research on the products we wanted to use on our RV. Uh, we don't have full paint, we just have decals, so that may make a difference as to uh, the products you use. Um, but these are the products we use. Um, we had a lot of sap going on, so I found some rubbing alcohol. Just uh, works the best to get that off there. And uh, actually, I just got done doing that. That worked really good. Um, we use McGuire's plastic uh, coat, uh, kind of a buffing agent on the headlights on the truck and different things here and there. Uh, we always use some Rain-X. Uh, got the old Purple Power. Um, anytime I use this Purple Power, I always go back over it with some kind of sealant or treatment. Um, don't want to leave it untreated because that stuff's kind of harsh and you'll end up with fading or your decals cracking or wherever you might have used it. I wouldn't recommend using it on the side of your RV. But um, we got some uh, buffing compound here that we're going to be using on the scratches from the uh, windstorm, those trees that fell on us. Here's where it gets really good. This stuff right here body wash by chemical guys and uh, this stuff works really nice and it really leaves behind a nice shine um, I would recommend that stuff and you can see we've used about half the gallon now and uh, we've used it for over a year works really good um, and then when it comes to interiors um, tires your rubbers that kind of thing um, this stuff works great 303 protective sealant so highly recommend that uh, just a little warning it does collect a little dirt it's not as much as like um, armor all or something like that I guess some of the other products I've used but it does collect a little dirt uh, this one here is the main one we use and I put this on everything 303 touchless sealant and basically it's supposed to be just a spray on, rinse off type of thing. Um, I found it best after you've washed the vehicle, go ahead and go back over the vehicle. You can spray some on the side and take your wash brush and then work it in and then rinse it. Um, one warning, it does leave a little spotting so you may wanna dry behind it. Um, a lot of times we don't dry the whole rig, we'll just dry the glass and and move on so but this stuff works great the water beads up for months after you've used it so anyway we are not affiliated with any of these products in any way shape or form it's just stuff that um, I've done research on and I prefer to use these products they seem to be working really good for us and so that's cleaning day and uh, we will get back to some adventure stuff trust me and uh, anyway let's get with it
Okay, so we're doing the brakes on uh, Nemus Parents motorhome. It's a workhorse chassis, and it's about a 2006, I do believe, with about 70,000 miles on it. Um, and he started complaining about a brake pulsation. And anyway, so we took a look at it, and this is what we found. And I've done these before. Um, it's relatively, honestly, it's relatively common through these years on this workhorse chassis. Um, as you can see, look at these deep cracks that are going on here. Um, and some of these cracks actually go all the way through. Um, so anyway. Yeah. I'm not going to go into great detail on this job, but uh, just beware. You feel a little uh, sponginess or a pulsation in your brake pedal or in the vehicle. It's time to take a look. And um, now he does tow a Jeep, flat tow a Jeep behind here, and the Jeep doesn't have additional brakes. Um, so that could contribute to this. But like I said, um, I've seen quite a few of these and people swear up and down they have not abused the brakes and and I, I tend to believe them because I've seen quite a few workhorse chassis with this brake condition going on and other chassis too but uh, it's potentially getting to a dangerous spot here I mean um, very potentially I mean you've seen the cracks in that rotor so anyway maintenance is important keep an eye on uh, what's going on with your rig and you know, even if you don't know anything about automotive, it, you need to find a place where you can take it and get it checked or at least have sense of awareness of your vehicle. Um, you know, when things start to change, something's, something's happening and it's time to get it looked at. So uh, anyway, this is quite a big job. Um, they are. I mean, I think you're looking at uh, paying about five hours per end to get this done. So, you know, you're probably into a thousand dollars worth of labor and uh the parts are another couple thousand so you're looking at about a three thousand dollar brake job and that does not include changing out the calipers uh we're just talking about putting pads and rotors on it and new uh, bearings and seals and uh we're probably going to go ahead and flush the brake fluid out but um yeah anyway so that's where we're at we got the uh, rig in here at nema's parents out place um Got a nice big shop to work in. And we're gonna change the oil and do some maintenance and really just do a really good inspection of everything. Uh, we wanna get everything taken care of because I'm anticipating it's gonna be quite some time before we get back here and any repairs on the road are gonna be much more difficult, but um, we're fairly prepared. And uh, so we're gonna go from there. We're gonna get going here. New tires, new wheels. So what do we got going on here? Well, we have a K&N air filter, and uh, it's been quite some time. I think it's been over, I don't know, six, eight thousand miles maybe since we've done anything with it. Time to take a look at it, probably clean it, re-oil it. Yeah, it's not, uh, so I'd consider that not severe. You still see some of the pink down in there, which is uh, kind of the oil residue. It has a lot, of, a lot of dye in it, so, but... Um, we're going to go ahead and clean this up and re-oil it, go from there. So we went across the scales in Oregon a couple weeks ago. And uh, the nice thing about Oregon, a lot of times you drive by and their scales are open and nobody's there. You just pull on, weigh yourself, uh, weigh, your, weigh each axle, take your time. Usually there's nobody there. We were pushing the limits a little bit in some areas. So um, we're okay, but uh, it was time to upgrade the tires and wheel situation. Uh, Max load on this one here was 3,200 pounds, and we had to go to an 18-inch wheel in order to kind of 
get in a better category. Uh, so we're 35, 25 max load on these. Um, Cooper Discover AT3 XLTs. Um, basically, uh, it's a little bit bigger tire. Uh, same width and stuff like that, but uh, it definitely puts us in another category as far as being safer. Um, so, if you have the opportunity to scale your rig or go to a cat scale and pay to have it scaled and evaluate your equipment, your tires, and um, you know each axle load, and take a look at your specs. I'm not going to go into deep detail on all that. I'm going to leave some of that up to you. This is a adventure channel with some RV tips and tricks here and there. What's going on, babe? Uh, we're going to lift this thing up and we're going to rotate the tires today. We're going to put the lefts on the rights and then we're going to put the front on the rear and then basically make a circle out of it on each side. So, um, just noticed a little more wear on the right hand side which doesn't make a lot of sense um, it's not abnormal wear so we're just gonna go ahead and rotate them right side to side and then basically circle them yeah so first I took off our TPMS sensors and we're gonna lift it up and start rotating <laughs> So this is a good time to visually inspect your tires, roll them all the way around, check for any bulges, uh, splits, anything abnormal, check it out. Also it's a good time to kind of check your bearings a little bit, you know, spin your hub around, listen, see if anything's abnormal, just pay close attention to, to everything, really. So. Uh -huh. 